Welcome to Get Wed, a podcast to plan your wedding by. I'm Katie. And I'm Kerry. And we're both here as professional photographers and brides-to-be to help you plan your big day. Each week we'll discuss a topic that you encounter along your wedding planning journey. And with the help of fellow industry experts, we'll navigate this crazy wedding world together. together. Hi everybody! Hello, hi everyone. <laughs> Our episode today is all is all about using wedding blogs to help you plan your wedding and help you to find your suppliers. Um, so today <laughs> we have got sorry, <laughs> we've got Phoebe from the wedding blog So You're Getting Married. So hello Phoebe. Hello. hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. You're very welcome, it's a pleasure. So yeah. Yes, I'm very excited about talking to you because I've followed your blog for absolutely ages, so it's nice to be able to speak to you. Oh, um, <laughs> so, um, first of all, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, your blog and a bit about yourself, please? Um, when I didn't mean to start a wedding blog, I think it's sort of it's one of those things that was like, oh, that's great, and I was like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean to. I never had an intention of blogging, and when I got engaged. Um, I just wanted to share all of my plans because I'd moved away from home. I was, I got engaged quite young. I was, I think maybe 20, 19. Really? Wow. wow. Um, and I'd moved to Leeds. I'd left all my friends and family and no one else my age in my year group family had got engaged. I was the first one. So I really wanted to kind of keep in touch with them. And I just started writing a blog from my mother-in-law's bedroom in Leeds and that's that's how it started it's not this kind of I'm a I I don't I've never thought of myself as someone that enjoys writing I enjoy blogging I wouldn't say I enjoy writing I enjoy the chatty side that the blogging is but that's how I started and everyone always asks oh how did you start and it was kind of was it wasn't an accident but I never knew that it'd get to the place where it is now yeah and um, can you just describe a bit for people who don't know what wedding blogs are? Although I'm pretty sure the world knows what wedding blogs are now. What, <laughs> what it is. <laughs> so each, usually each day, we're being good, there are um, real weddings and our bread and butter will be photographers submitting real weddings that we blog. We leave all of the suppliers. We have a questionnaire from the bride and groom so they can give all of their insights into their day, any tips, wisdom that they learned. Um, and then on top of that, I will blog about the other aspects, personal sides of wedding planning, such as problems with budgeting or any of the things that's sort of on top of the pretty things. And then we have Rebecca who covers everything to do with honeymoons and travel. And then we have Emily who blogs about everything to do with um, beauty and... <laughs> 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 that's just Phoebe's little dog <laughs> this girl <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't do this he's outraged he's not part of the team he's just like what about oh, me yeah. about it. <laughs> Shush. he's gone he's gone he's gone um, and there's Emily that blogs about everything to do with beauty, wellness, skincare, sort of looking after the outside and inside of your body leading up to the wedding and then there's bits and bobs in between. There's just because just because you're planning a wedding doesn't mean that you don't care about other things. Mm. So sometimes I'll do house updates or my favourite lipsticks and stuff like that. It's kind of evolved into a wedding and a lifestyle blog because I think people just like to read lots of different things rather than just weddings. Yeah. Yeah. I finished? You could. <laughs> <laughs> He's made himself known. He's happy now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what would be kind of your advice like the best way to to start using wedding blogs and and what to kind of do if, if you are getting married you reckon I think there are so many wedding blogs now when mm-hmm. I first started I think there were maybe four or five in the UK there were a lot more in America um whereas now there are so many that you can put whatever you're looking for in a, in a wedding or what you think that you want and you'll find a blog that fits what you want which I think is great because if you're if you have a lot of brides think that they want a certain thing and then they'll actually start looking and go "Mm, actually no and also that costs a lot of money yeah (laughs) Yeah. that's what I found more than anything yeah (laughs) um 
but I like to, I've got mine broken down by budget. So I think when brides are searching, if you put weddings under 10K into Google, I think I come up somewhere in the first couple pages. Um, and I think to, I think just read as many blogs at first and then you'll quickly realize which ones are the ones that you fit with. Because um, if you're more alternative, you'd go to Rock and Roll Bride. Um, if you're more, more into the vintage side of things, you'd go to Love My Dress and more kind of contemporary modern, you'd go to sort of Rock My Wedding. So I think once you've read a few, you'll learn which ones are the ones for you because there are so many. <laughs> yeah, there are. yeah, I love the fact you said you mentioned you, you break yours down by budget because I had this conversation on an engagement sheet yesterday. Actually, my bride was just like, we didn't even know how much a wedding was going to cost us until we started booking everything because you don't do. You just book stuff and then suddenly you're like, oh my God, it's going to cost this much. It's, it's quite, it, it's because... I think brides are always shocked with, especially photography, mm. they're just like, oh, but they accept it. But when it comes to stuff like flowers and cakes, they think, oh, because I've bought a bouquet from Tesco for £10, that's kind of their rough guide of how much flowers yeah, yeah. are. Whereas when you yeah. put floristry and skill and talent or whichever supply it is, it is a lot more money than you think. And you can have a great wedding for under £10,000. That section on my blog is probably one of the most popular because... Even if, even if you've got more to spend, it's good to see what you can do for under ten thousand pounds. And sometimes I'll get weddings submitted, and in the questionnaire, I, I ask them to tell me how much it was, or or a bracket, or to leave it blank if they don't want to discuss it. But when they put under ten thousand pounds, and then I look back at the wedding, and I'm just like, oh my god, you need to be blogging. <laughs> how did how did you do all of this for under ten thousand pounds? Like it's. That's the, I always get very surprised when, I mean, a lot of research and effort goes into all the kind of suppliers and stuff, but you can have an incredible wedding for under £10,000. Mm. And for yeah. over £50,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, That'd be pretty amazing, that one. <laughs> so um, in terms of finding inspiration and gathering all that side of things, um, do you think blogs are the best way to go about that? Do people, are people using Pinterest more for that side of things? Um, I still think that we as bloggers adopted Pinterest quite early on and I think there are a lot of brides-to-be that still haven't maybe jumped on the Pinterest wagon or it's still quite new, whereas I think more are using Instagram because I think most wedding blogs, bloggers, have their own Instagram page which they will put all of their recent posts and, and pictures of stuff and more inspiration on top of that. I think... I think Pinterest can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very... Yeah, yeah. it's like a so black hole. Like to go because you just get lost in all of this and then you think that you have to craft everything for your wedding and it's going to save you loads of money. When in actual fact, it probably won't and it will cost more and it will cost mm -hmm. all your time. So I think yeah. anything on Pinterest has to be seen with a pinch of salt because it's... I don't know if it's just the people or the kind of my feed, but it is popularised by... Um, Americans mm. I feel like yeah. so you'll see this beautiful lakeside wedding in Utah and you're just like this is the wedding that I'm gonna have <laughs> you look at the Lake District and it's gray for 300 days of the year and you can't get married outside and all this kind of stuff it kind of it's it's beautiful and it's wonderful inspiration but sometimes I feel that brides just need to know that it's not all possible yeah yeah <laughs> Definitely be a realist about it. Add back to it because you want to get whisked away in all of this magic of, of planning. But it is when you then sit down and look at your budget and how much things are, you realise that these Pinterest weddings are just sometimes ridiculous. Mm. Ridiculous. Yeah. And they won't tell you how much they cost. No. no. And, and all just... the stylists and all the yeah, yeah. all the people yeah. involved. Yeah. So I think Pinterest is great. I think wedding blogs are better, mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> um, because I think, I mean, I mainly only feature UK weddings, so most of the suppliers listed will be UK based, so you can at least get in touch with them and ask how much they cost, whereas if you fall in love with a, a, an Australian dressmaker or a Canadian photographer, it's great that you found them on Pinterest, but then you have to realise that there's a 
much more of a cost involved in mm. having them for your wedding. Whereas I think if you're reading UK based, you kind of get a bit more of an idea of how it's much it's going to cost for you. Take inspiration from them, but you can find out the nitty gritty bits. I think if you read the UK ones. Mm. Yeah, I suppose when you're planning um, your wedding. You a, oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we're both so keen. Sorry, like, Carrie, it's just something to mind. But as you were planning your wedding, because you mentioned you got you got married quite young or engaged quite young, I don't suppose much of that was around for you. Oh, there was nothing. No, Absolutely. there was no. There wasn't even Twitter. Oh, like, wow. there was just it was magazines, which is magazines and word of mouth of where I lived. So it will be the town photographer photographer who's photographed everyone's weddings for the last 30 years that's just kind of who everyone had and yeah it was it was magazine and also my florist who I loved and I always recommend um when I started planning properly there were bigger US blogs that she was reading like 100 layer cake mm-hmm. oh yeah I love that you stuff that blog yeah is that, is that one still going I think so yeah I think it might have moved but yeah I... yeah so there were like the old old ones she was reading them because she had found some US florists that she'd like so she was kind of my in into the other side of what you could have it wasn't mm. necessarily as traditional as what the magazines were pushing there was kind of little bit less traditional which is what I which is what I realized I then wanted and then it was a matter of trying to find things to fit in and even we got married in 2010 and even then there was hardly anything it was all still very very traditional it wasn't it wasn't like it is now if I had to get married now I'd be screwed I was just about to ask you that (laughs) Yeah, it's awful. I hate looking at all this stuff every day because I'm like, I want that for my wedding. I wish I'd had this. And if I had to get married tomorrow, I would struggle to plan it because there's so much choice now, which is great. But I would want about three or four changes of dresses. I'd want at least (laughs) five photographers. And it's, it's I think it would be a lot harder now. So whilst there wasn't much choice back then and there's stuff that I would change about my wedding... Um, brides are sport, sport for choice now which I think it is a good thing but mm-hmm. a bit no. overwhelming yeah it is it must it must be because you you'd come online and even if you just put weddings into Instagram I think the wedding hashtag itself always has over about six to eight million tags and you're just like oh my god <laughs> yeah there's yeah. so much yeah but it was it was hard planning it and it was also hard because no one I didn't know anyone the last Mm. wedding that I had been to was when I was a bridesmaid at the age of 10 or 11 because we hadn't been to I hadn't been to friends weddings yet because no one got married yeah it was it was hard I think I did a good job (laughs) (laughs) and how do you feel about magazines now because do you think they're kind of dying out a bit more and blogs are taking over or do you think they're still relevant I think that they have a place and I think people just like with books will always prefer to pick up paper Mm. than read online however the actual content of wedding magazines I feel is quite um diplomatic way to put it (laughs) very kind of it's still I think it's still a bit outdated, isn't it, really, the ones I've seen. It is, and it's all very kind of fluffy. Mm, and all. Yeah. Whereas with a blog, you'll get inspiration every day. And even if you're reading five wedding blogs, that's five real weddings that you've seen. And on top of that, you'll see suppliers. You right? <laughs> <laughs> you'll see um, different suppliers, competitions, offers. And then on top of that, there will be bloggers that have shared a post perhaps of someone who had lost their father before a wedding or how to cope with stress and anxiety before Mm. a wedding. You don't really read those things in wedding magazines. They do keep it very vanilla. Yeah, and it's very light and happy, isn't it, all wedding magazines? Some people will want that, whereas I don't. I would prefer to read about other things Mm -hmm. rather than the fluffy things. And 
you have to remember that the, the magazines are mainly pushed by advertising. So yeah. a lot of the stuff on there is there because they're paid to be there, not yeah. necessarily because they're really good. Whereas we're lucky in that we can build up relationships with the people behind the brands because because they want to work with us. Um, I don't have that advertising on the blog anymore. So if I'm promoting something, it's usually because I just really like it mm. or yeah. they've offered me millions of pounds. But uh, <laughs> it's a fine line with wedding magazines, I think, because people do prefer the print side. And for inspiration, I think you get just as much inspiration on blogs. Mm-hmm. And I think my favourite is probably Brides magazine still because I would say they're the kind of vogue of wedding magazines. Um, but the rest are just a bit, yeah, still really traditional, I think. Yeah. I think there's yeah. that thing still where when you get engaged, isn't it? It's like rushing out to buy your first wedding magazine. Yeah. It's just, I don't think that will ever go away. I think it's just something that's fairly traditional and it has been what everyone does, isn't it? And I do yeah. find that um, with in terms of like photography, if I have a wedding featured on a blog, people are a little bit excited about it and it goes onto Facebook. But if their wedding is featured in a magazine, they go insane about it. And they're like, oh, my God, we're in print. And they're so excited about that. But um, There's still something very exciting about being in print. Mm. I still get very excited if someone wants some of my words in print. But they then have to have bought that magazine. And then you don't really get the interaction. Whereas sometimes when I blog a wedding and then I'll put it on Instagram those people can then tell the photographer or the dress designer or the mm. couple they look great and their wedding's perfect and they want their wedding. Whereas with a magazine, you don't you don't have that interaction side of things. Yeah. Which I think today people like that kind of fast. You can just tweet someone and be like, "Really loved X, Y, and Z," and you go, "Well, thank you very much." <laughs> Whereas with a magazine, you don't really. It's a lot of more effort to mm. do that. Yeah. I think they'll die out. Mm. Yeah. I think the big ones will stay. It's a sad fact, isn't it? Because I was trying to think when we were preparing for this interview, the last time I actually read a magazine, and I can't remember the last time I went out and bought a magazine for anything. Yeah. I buy interior magazines. Like, mm. I have a whole yeah. No, Good Living, I don't mind. And it's not too... Yeah. All the others are just ads, though, aren't they? I remember, yeah. you know, you, you buy it, and I'd just be like, it's just ads. It's driving yeah. me mad. There's nothing in here. Mm. Like... Yeah. Because with the interior stuff, I, I'm going there for the kind of styling and the, bit, yeah. the bits and bobs that I can then do. With a wedding magazine, if you go for the styling, I always feel that it, it's maybe like a few fair months behind because yeah. it's been on several wedding blogs because print is so slow. Mm. Um, I guess, yeah. yes, but there's lots of interior blogs, but for some reason... I don't know, I just like the shiny pages. <laughs> yeah. I think Interiors magazines get it right as well because they're curating a subject, aren't they, sometimes? Like, it'll be around, like, a certain time of the year or something and everything yeah. in there fits that styling. And sometimes yeah. wedding magazines are trying to cater so much for all times of year or all types of weddings that they're not actually narrowing it down mm. enough. Yeah. yeah. Whereas that's the good thing about blogs is that you've got a blog for everything. Mm. You've got geographical blogs, like there's Brides Up North, there's um, Welsh wedding blogs, Scottish wedding blogs, so you can definitely find what you're looking for. Whereas when you pick up a magazine, oh, maybe three or four pages out of the whole thing, I'll think, oh, that was really good and well put together. The rest is just a bit bleh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you're listening, magazine. <laughs> yeah, I know. I already myself myself Yeah. We'll have to get a magazine editor on and have the other side of the story. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that they think that we're we are awful because mm. we're we are not helping their readership, but yet they want to collaborate with us on something. So there's yeah. a certain magazine that has wedding blog awards, and they then stopped printing, and now they're just an online magazine. And it's mm. kind of well, we're now we're doing the same thing. Mm. We're now putting inspiration online. Um, so I think they must have a little bit of resentment for yeah. bloggers. It's so, it must be so hard to keep. Sorry, we've turned in this. This is a completely different subject now, haven't we? But because um, there's so much free content out there with wedding blogs, it's going to be incredibly hard for a wedding magazine to keep up, anyway, isn't it? Because you've actually got to go and part with money to kind of get information you can get for free online. So this is the thing: 
it's we are offering free media, daily free mm. media, which most magazines are monthly or sometimes, I don't know, quarterly. Mm. Um, so then you have to wait. So if you've just got engaged, you buy, you pick up last month or you wait for next month. Whereas if you've just got engaged, you can sit and read tens of wedding blogs from your laptop mm. or your tablet, which I think is I think it's much better. I think brides would prefer it. It's less effort and less money. Mm. Yeah. Don't. And I think the nice thing about your blog as well is it's quite personal, so you kind of get to know you and the person sort of behind the blog. Yeah. And, um, one of the stories I really liked that, that you did was about your engagement ring, and that really kind of interested me. So tell us a bit of a story about, yeah, what happened with your, your, your engagement and your <laughs> wedding ring, actually. It's one of those things that at the time I was umming and ahhing, but people still ask me about yeah. I changed my wedding ring, and I didn't think that it was going to be that much of a big deal, but... <laughs> It was to me because it was my, it was mine, but I didn't think other people would care that much. But people, I put it, I first put it onto Instagram, a picture of my current wedding band and engagement ring, and I said that I was thinking of changing it. And the amount of people were like, oh my god, no! <laughs> that's that's the ring that you got married with. That's the ring that your husband chose and proposed to you with. And I was like, no. I appreciate that, but I was very young, and he was very young when he chose my engagement ring, and that was at the age of 21. And then I was then 27, 28, and my my tastes have changed. Mm. I've changed. I wanted something less blingy and just a little bit more suiting to me now. And I asked Michael, I said to him, would you mind if I got a new engagement ring? and a new wedding band and he said no that's fine like he 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 didn't hold anything sentimental on them so I started looking and then I found what I wanted but it took me a year from finding it to actually buy it because really? there was part of me that was still kind of like because I had the intention of selling my current set and using that money to put towards a new one Right. But what actually happened is that I've kept my current set <laughs> and then I just bought new ones because there is a small part of me that does appreciate the sentimentality yeah. behind them because that was the ring that the vicar gave to us and that was the engagement ring that he saved up and he chose and he bought when he was young. So I have kept them. I was going to get rid of them. And then when I got the new one, everyone was just like, Oh, this is this is this is really pretty. But do you not feel that this? Because I've now got a gold. It's two diamonds, and it's got morganite in the middle, which is a kind of pinky, bluey, peachy changes mm -hmm. with the light. People now think that this is more of a fad, and in ten years' time, will I want to change this? Oh, really? Yeah. So I was because my first one was platinum, just with three diamonds, which that that's a classic mm. engagement ring. It was just a platinum wedding band. So my mum maintains that I'm probably going to change my mind in five years' time. And, and then I thought, well, so what if I do? Yeah, you just keep swapping <laughs> yeah. back and forth. <laughs> I'm married. I'm still engaged. Uh, I was still with him. And it's just, a, it's just a ring. It's just a symbol of what it is. Mm. Um, but I didn't realise how depressive that was going to be. Because yeah. no one else that I've spoken to has changed theirs. But... The amount of secret messages I got from girls who said, oh, I'd love to change my ring, but my fiancé bought it yeah. for me. It's just not what I would have chosen. I was like, oh, give it no. six years and see if they care then. <laughs> yeah. I think that must be such a common thing because I, I was lucky that me and uh, my fiancé went shopping for my engagement ring together. So he proposed yeah. with a cheap ring from Argos and then we went and picked the ring together. Yeah. So I have still got the Argos ring though. I did keep it. So I was sentimental. Like, sentimental. But it's like five sizes too big. It doesn't fit. But um, yeah, going out and picking that ring together was a really nice thing to do. And I think so many people must end up with a ring that is fine because it was picked for them. But actually, they would never have chosen it themselves. It is. It's one of those things. And at, at the age of, at that time when he and I would have only had magazines and jeweler shop windows to look in, there wasn't that much for engagement rings either. And it was all kind of like you had to have a traditional engagement ring, mm. whereas. I've now got something that I don't think I'll ever see because this is from America that other people around here will be wearing. Yeah. 
I, I quite I quite like that and I would have liked to have sat down with him and just looked through lots of different things whereas I think he he would have just been like well this is what girls get engaged with mm. and actually the jeweler yeah. that we got our my ring from and um, said to us that when he gets men coming on their own he pushes them towards just a traditional band with like one diamond because yeah. it's the safest option to go it for just, it is a safe option and it does always look timeless and pretty don't yeah. get me wrong um but it was just yeah it just then wasn't me and I have a I have a signet ring that I've got for my 21st 21st or 18th that I wear on this hand which is gold and then he had bought me platinum so it kind of just grated on me that they weren't the same metals Mm, yeah for like five years I was like (laughs) I, I never asked for a gold one that's the thing I didn't ask for a because he wanted to choose it himself Mm. so yeah it was it's something that I do get asked about like often and I feel kind of I feel bad for the girls that are just sat there with these rings that they don't like and I've just gone oh look at my new ring (laughs) yeah well got to sort it out haven't you I guess if you if you want (laughs) to it's just a ring it is just a ring and I don't see the problem in changing it Mm. Yeah, at all. A lot of people do, but I don't see the problem because it's what it symbolises more than what it actually is. Yeah, as long as your husband doesn't mind, that's the main person, isn't it? So if he doesn't mind, then why not? Because you're the one that's got to wear it. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Okay. So so getting um, back towards wedding blogs. Now that we've had that story, I was desperate to hear about that. That's good. Um, So. Obviously, we're in 2017, and there's that whole big trend report come about about the types of weddings that we're going to likely see with the, like the Pantone colour of the year being greenery. Yeah. Um, I'm really annoyed because I had all these great plans for my wedding, and then I found out I was a wedding trend. So that's great. Um, <laughs> 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 but would you like to talk just about the trends that you are seeing from the blog side of things um, that you hope will trickle down into weddings? I'm very sorry, but greenery. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Gen- <laughs> it, it, I think it's it started to trickle in last year mm. with lots of um, lots of potted plants and just lots more foliage, and then when they released that 2017 was greenery, I think that's all you're going to see. I think that's all you're going to see for the next couple of years. Will be lots more indoor trees and plants, and because greenery is cheaper than flowers as well. That's so why we went for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too ahead of the time <laughs> now it's going to be yeah. really expensive because everyone wants it. yeah okay, this is the thing you need you need to find a wood and just go and chop yeah. lots of free greenery <laughs> but it's I think it's one of those things that it's accessible to anyone and I think it suits anyone's theme so if you're having a barn wedding a teepee wedding some kind of Wiccan wedding it you can put greenery in and it look. I think it always looks really pretty. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. My wedding will still look pretty, but <laughs> it's just yeah. annoying that now that's what, well, it's not annoying. It's, it's nice. I guess that I, I'm trendy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you haven't had one at what I, I would want to get rid of first. So yeah, well you often, I don't know if you've done a blog recently, but I remember seeing blogs from you in the past of where you say about things you want to see abolished in the coming yeah. year. That one, I fell ill a couple of weeks ago and it was when I had, I've half written it. So that will be going up soon. But um, the first one I did in 2014, I got hate mail for. Did you? I was just going to say, yeah, because I guess lots of people have then done it and then, mm. oh no, so you got some nasty emails, did you? Oh God, yeah. But, uh, okay. it, I'm allowed to swear. Yeah, we can make yeah, it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, let's have a sweary one. Let's go. <laughs> I thought there was there was a couple there was a couple that were just a kind of like who do you think you are to tell brides what they can't have, and there was one that was so aggressive and was just calling me a pretentious bitch, and I've just I have this platform and I'm, and I'm abusing it because I'm just degrading what brides want for their wedding. Blah 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 blah, and I I never responded to any of them, but then I did write another blog post, and I just was. I wanted to explain that it is all tongue in cheek. Like these things, some of them are horrible. Some of the things I put in every single one, like um, chair sashes or chair backs, chair ties. I just don't understand why wedding venues need these anymore. You can get perfectly decent chairs 
mm-hmm. and it yeah. makes the pictures look dated. But just get rid of them all the time. And there's lot there's there's lots of the, the thing is I see it all all the time. <laughs> so there's certain stuff that I think will carry on for a while, like light up letters. Mm-hmm. I hate. Yeah. I, them. I used to love them you know a few years ago when they were new I was like yeah. oh, how cool are they and then they're everywhere and then you think yeah and I, I think because we see so many weddings as well but we see the same thing yeah. over and over again but for people who are getting married sometimes it's only the first time their guests would have seen it so that's yeah. why things trickle down a lot take longer to trickle down don't they yeah. and I find that with when I write the trends posts so I did one last year, no, 2015, I wrote about foliage and um, lots of tree arches and sort of hanging leafy decor. And that's now more popular in 2017. It takes it takes longer for everything to kind of people, to, and also they may get engaged in 2015 and go, let's have that in 2017. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's longer wait. And by that time, I've gone, I hate that. I hate writing that. <laughs> Yeah, be having now. <laughs> um, they must hate. They must hate me for that. But the uh, the abolish ones. It's um. There's the same ones all the time. So swirly waistcoats mm-hmm. on men. Oh yeah. Like I, why? why I think still... again, that's one of those things where they just go into Mosbros oh, and they've never got yeah. married before, and so they're told that's what they should yeah, probably have, isn't it? And then I'm just like, are you not reading the blogs? Because mm. I will now not blog weddings that have swirly... Wait, I can't remember the last time I blogged a wedding with a swirly waistcoat. So <laughs> they shouldn't be seeing these things. It's our duty of care <laughs> to the right. They don't need these things in their lives. And it's the same for tails. Like a man, I think a tails waist um, jacket, it has its place. Mm. And it's not at your local hotel like I think if you're having a very formal wedding then yes but you don't need to go into Moss Bros and and they give you that why can't you just wear a suit why can't you wear a suit from next and then wear it again like that looks yeah you can have a very nice waistcoat non-swirly and a nice tie and and that looks smart you don't need swirly waistcoats and tails (laughs) no no yeah people just get on that wedding train don't they and they think this is what we've got to have especially if maybe parents and, and mm. people like that people maybe not being rude a bit older and in charge and you kind yeah. of get pushed into that kind of because mm. you know that kind of thing used to put me off getting married I'd see that and go oh god I don't want to get married that looks yeah. gross <laughs> I think another thing is that it's laziness I mm. think it's kind of like with the light up letters it, it does look pretty so they just think let's just have that when in actual fact you could have a look around and get love in succulents or other things like you don't need like you don't need light up letters just because you can't think of anything else to have mm. which is where we come in like we spend ages trying to give you all this inspiration so that you can have something different so it it gets hard with trends because I do and I feel bad when I get a wedding in that is really pretty but I just think it's just it's just the same as lots of others because that's what's in fashion now mm. Mm. it's hard because then you think should you be doing more styled shoots um because then you can push the direction things go but mm. brides love other brides as weddings that they get yeah. more than styled shoots do so mm, right yeah more real and more kind of yeah uh, and there's nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting the things that other people have had. Like at the end of the day, your wedding, you can do what you want with it. Um, but I think if you're spending that much time and effort on planning something, why wouldn't you want to make it just a little bit more personal to you as a couple, not just have bird cages, light up letters, a sweetheart trolley and cupcakes. Like you just, you don't need to have those things. You can have whatever you want. Mm. Yeah. It's funny because those things were new once, weren't they? Because my mum still thinks cupcakes are really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless her. Cupcakes is that I feel they never get the kind of icing to bun There's ratio. loads of icing. Loads of icing. There's always icing and then it just becomes sickly. And then you get to the bun and you're just like, well, what's the point? No, what? <laughs> uh, I hate cupcakes. I hate cupcakes. They should be gotten rid of as well. 
they're on my abolish list. Yeah, do room 101 and just like <laughs> trapdoor everything. <laughs> um, so kind of moving on from that, you help with honeymoons as well, don't you? So is it Becky who, did you say who? Yeah. Rebecca, sorry, who, um, yeah, helps with your advice for honeymoon. So that's really good too because... I'm still struggling with that one myself. So you still have gone on honeymoon? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when did you get married? Um, April last year. So yeah. Uh, that's not too bad. That's not too yeah. bad. Yeah. We had like a little mini, you know, we went up for like, like a week and, and had a nice little time together, but we have not done our big we just can't decide and so mm. so yeah, so I think that that's obviously really helpful, isn't it? So what would be your kind of tips with maybe, I know that's more Rebecca's side, but what would be your tips on planning? Or hard, because sadly, I think it comes down to budget. Mm -hmm. I think it comes down to how much money you can spend. But I think you need to decide, do you want to go somewhere straight after the wedding or do you want to wait? And I think a lot of people use a honeymoon to do their dream holiday. Yeah. Or places they have always wanted to go, do things that they've always wanted to go. In which case, that's a whole add-on of planning and budgeting on top of your wedding mm. if you've got the time and the finances great add it on but I think have a little getaway afterwards and then when everything's all done with the wedding sit down and plan kind of your dream honeymoon so whether it's a few months later or a year or a year later yeah it, <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think it matters you won't have the same buzz of like, oh, we got married yesterday and now we're in Sri Lanka. But <laughs> yeah. it'll, still be, it'll still be an amazing holiday. But I think it, it comes down to when you want to go and how much you want to spend because it's very expensive, especially mm. honeymoon. Yep. And yeah, I think it's definitely when when you want to go and where. Yeah. yeah. I think... I think I'm you sit down it's like we can go anywhere we can go anywhere in the world where do you want to go yeah yeah that's what we're getting to he wants to go <laughs> to one place and what do one thing and I want to do the other so it's like what do you do like <laughs> you'll have to have separate honeymoons yeah that's, <laughs> that's a good idea yeah I just got my own <laughs> FaceTime the entire time because yeah. it's free yeah. wi-fi if you go to these resorts there's always free wi-fi do so you FaceTime each other it'll be fine <laughs> done <laughs> I think yeah, loads of people do that. that. Like, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. You go, you go. Um, I was going to say, also, I sort of found that all the places I did want were, ridi yeah, ridiculously expensive. So mm. I was like, oh, we can't do that. So, yeah, it's it's really hard. What were you going to say, Kerry? I was just saying about how, near enough, every bride and groom that I meet now will do the mini moon thing. So they'll go away the week after the wedding or, like, for a long weekend after the wedding or something yeah. just to have that break. And then they're all planned to do something big later on. Yeah. Um, that's I think what it's important to go away after the wedding because yeah. you don't realize leading up just how awful and stressful and just exhausting it is mm -hmm. and even if the day itself is wonderful you start really I mean I woke up at about 5 36 and had all my hair done and everything and then you it's just go 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 all day and you don't realize how much effort you put into talking to people and looking mm -hmm. happy <laughs> yeah <laughs> Kind of, it's genuinely exhausting and then usually the next day we had people that had traveled from far and wide we didn't just want to go because they've come all the way here for the wedding we wanted to stay the next day and say hello to everyone which we did do and was great and then we went for a mini moon because it's important to have that downtime just to be like oh my god like we got married mm. yeah Rather Definitely. than, I think if you were to then having to go back into your mundane normality of life, I think that would be Yeah, like back to work. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> like you definitely need something. Yeah, I agree. And you're like, you're knackered, aren't you? I didn't realise yeah. how tired I'd be. I was exhausted. Like even the woman who checked us in this little cottage we were staying in was like, oh, you look very tired. And I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're now going to sleep for three days solid. yeah <laughs> so yeah I think I think that's that's really good advice to have a little mini mini break mm, definitely. and don't put don't put pressure on it it doesn't need to be somewhere wonderful it just needs to be away from other human beings yeah <laughs> just be the two of you for a little while like it doesn't need to be magical mm. Um, mm. but yeah I think that is important yeah definitely. 
So just to finish up, what would your best advice be for brides and grooms who are starting out on the planning their wedding journey? I get asked this a lot, like a lot. And I always say just go in and plan the wedding that you want to have. And then if something's too expensive or if something's not available, try and work around it. And don't just give in or don't be pressurized by family especially family um because they will have an opinion and you don't realize this until you get married but other people no. <laughs> very much have an opinion on how you should get married and just don't listen to them basically <laughs> don't <laughs> and, and have the wedding that you want to have because when I was planning as a 21 year old I was listening to my family because they're the only people that could have given me advice whereas now when I'm nearly 30 next week. Oh, um, happy birthday. Oh, early birthday. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm much more headstrong. I know what I'd want and what I wouldn't want. And I'd happily say no to people. Whereas I think when you're starting out and everything's so overwhelming and they're so happy for you, that's the other thing. It's all done out of love. Yeah, they want to just help, don't they? Yeah, they do want to help. But don't let them push things onto you that you wouldn't necessarily want because it's your wedding and there's two of you involved and be respectful of it yeah that it's yours not mm. other people's I think and I, then I think you'll have a wedding that you will truly love and you don't need to spend lots of money mm. you can go on the blog and have a look at weddings for under ten thousand pounds <laughs> that's a good plug I like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so true um, being selfish is the way forward I think yeah it is. and it's not being I mean it is being selfish but it's for the greater good mm. because then you'll be happy and you'll enjoy your wedding day more. Um, and those people that are pressuring, they'll get over it. When it's all done and dusted, they won't care anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's what I found. The one thing about planning, the hardest part were other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, we're just like, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like RSV, RSVPing to invites or people texting you and saying, can so-and-so come and... It was just other people made the planning hard, whereas I knew what I wanted to do and all that kind of stuff. And then it was the only hurdles were just other human beings, which just made it very frustrating. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's very true. Do what you want to do. That's it. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, cool. Thank you so much for today. And do you want to um, tell us then about the website and where we can find you? And So it's um, stogettingmarried.com. Um, and then I'm on Instagram and Twitter, yeah, as they're my favourite social medias, as at Phoebe Wedding. Um, and then we also have at So You're Getting Married on Instagram for the blog, which is mainly just sort of pretty pictures of what's been on the wedding or stuff that we like and that kind of thing. But if Rebecca goes on honeymoons and travels, we link all of the pictures onto there. So she's about to go to Palm Springs on Saturday. Oh, and she's in. I know, and then she's in the Seychelles at the end of March. What a dream so, job! I, I know. know. <laughs> so we put all of that stuff on there because people like looking at beaches and palm trees, basically. So <laughs> it's good though because it means that we can go to these places and have a look if they're good enough. Mm. Which yeah, it's a it's a service is what we're providing. <laughs> <laughs> to do it, and we stepped forward. Oh, you're so brave, you're so brave. <laughs> you're so welcome. <laughs> Perfect. Well, awesome. thank you so much for your time today and um, we will let you go. See you soon. Thank you, see you, bye. bye. Thanks for listening to Get Wed. Would you like to hear even more from us? We have lined up some secret Get Wed episodes for our exclusive Get Wed members. To become a member, then go to www.getwedpodcast.co.uk and click on support. From here you'll find our Patreon page and you can unlock the level of membership that you want. Supporting us through Patreon will help us grow GetWed and give you even more content. So if you enjoy this thing, then support us today. Until next week, happy, happy planning! planning.